You know, this week we continue to look at the titles given to St. Joseph in the, litany, in the litany of St. Joseph. And today we want to take the time to reflect upon Joseph most chaste. You know, in the Gospels we find that Joseph never speaks a word. There are no recorded words. He's always there, though, as a silent presence. We read about him, that he was a righteous man, unwilling to expose Mary to shame, and that he was going to divorce her quietly. He was righteous precisely because he was docile and obedient to God. He was faithful because of his trust in what the Lord asked of him. So we see his prompt obedience in this response to the intervention of God's angel in his dreams. I spoke about this last week in, on the topic of obedience. You know, in the divine praises, those prayers that we pray at the end of benediction, Saint Joseph is referred to as her most chaste spouse. What does this really mean, her most chaste spouse? Well, I think we need to look at this virtue of chastity. Chastity is a misunderstood virtue. Today's society tells us that chastity is, is suppressing our natural sexual urges. As we all know, we live in a highly sexualized world today. Everywhere we look, sexual images abound. The lack of modesty in dress oftentimes leaves little to the imagination. Many television programs are filled with conversations which carry sexual innuendos or overtones. It seems that we can't get away from it. But yet all of us, married or single, are called to live this virtue of chastity as difficult as it might be in our world today. The temptations of the evil one are prominent in the area of human sexuality. All the baptized are called to chastity. All of Christ's faithful are called to lead a chaste life in keeping with their particular state of life, modeling Christ himself. At the moment of your baptism, because you receive Christ, you receive this gift. However, we must learn the proper understanding of the virtue of chastity and then pray Pray for the grace to live it in our fullest potential. The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches that charity is the greatest of the three theological virtues, expressed in the love of both God and our fellow man. It is said to be the end of other virtues because it directs all other virtues to its own end. So charity is the mother of all the virtues. So if we want to grow in virtue, we must mature in charity. And then under the influence of charity, chastity can be seen as a school by which we learn to give the gift of ourself. In other words, we must master ourself in order to, the give, in order to give the gift of ourself to God and to others. So chastity leads a person who practices it to become a witness to the fidelity and loving kindness of God. Let me put it in another way. Chaste love requires that a person wills the good of another without possessing the other as one's own. Saint Joseph was entrusted with the child Jesus and his blessed mother. He was chaste in body, but also in his heart. Joseph loved freely, and in doing so, this created the interior peaceful order in the Holy Family. And by the grace of God, Joseph had what we might call a united heart. By that I mean that he was deeply devoted to Mary in fidelity and love, just as he was to God. And because of his deep love for God, he was then able to live a chaste love in his relationship with Mary and Jesus. You know, lust is the predominant vice at work in the hearts of people today, I believe. There's no question regarding the impact of the sexual permissiveness of our culture. We are all aware of the, of the impact that pornography has on an individual and on their family. 
As I said earlier, human sexuality is, is the greatest of the temptations of the evil one. So we need the help of St. Joseph most chaste to overcome these temptations. Living the virtue of chastity elevates one's love and attraction to a deep respect for the dignity of the other. Chastity allows a person to see purely, in other words, to see God in another, and with piety, in other words, to revere the divine image in the other. This is what Joseph was able to do, and this is what parents must teach their children. But in order to do so, parents must live a chaste life themselves. The virtue of chastity is reflected in the other virtues of honesty and faith and trustfulness and charity and peace and worshiping and seeking God. It is reflected in the way we dress. It's reflected in the conversations we have and the television shows and movies we watch. These virtues will, must be lived in parents before parents can influence their children. And I believe chastity begins there. If parents do not teach the importance of chastity, then the culture will teach them something far different. Teach them that this is not mom or dad's law, but this is God's law, and God wants us to do what is best for ourselves. So parents, you may not think about this, but your whole life, your whole life teaches many things to your children and words aren't always required. Your role in guiding your children in this virtue is critical. It's critical. So the season of Lent is a time of conversion and repentance. If you struggle with living the virtue of chastity in any way, in your thoughts, words, or any actions, whether you're married or single, Saint Joseph, our spiritual father, wants to teach you the way to true chastity, how to live it, and then how to teach it. There can be no question that Jesus learned this virtue from his father, Joseph. We often see Saint Joseph depicted with a lily, the sign of purity. His life shows us that the full gift of self toward another does not necessarily have to involve sexual relations. He loved Mary and that meant that he was willing to dedicate himself to what was best for her and for the divine son she was carrying. He put all his love and his life at the service of their vocation. And in doing so, he fulfilled his own vocation. St. Joseph teaches us that it is possible to love without possessing another person. And men, this is for you. Men in particular need to imitate the chaste heart of Joseph. The world needs these types of husbands who love their wives as Joseph loved Mary. If men reverence their wives as holy temples, then families will be renewed and the attacks against the dignity of the human person and family will be overcome. Saint Joseph will fight for us if only we call upon him for assistance. So St. Joseph, most chaste, pray for us.